welcome back to the Lua History Channel as we continue to explore fractals as it pertains to building Luo houses. If you haven't watched part one of this video, kindly pause and go back and watch part one as a lot of information contained in this video is dependent on part one. Also consider subscribing, liking and sharing this video in order to increase our viewership. Thank you. So as we said earlier, we're going to be giving you the connection with fractals and how they grow. As you can see, in the middle is the main house, the main compound where the parents and uh, all the family started from. And then to the right, you have the firstborn son's home. He builds them. Then you have the second born son's home to the left hand side. Next will be the grandchild who will build will follow the same pattern built to the right of his uh, dad's home and if there's a second uh, grandchild grandson they would build to the right hand side uh, Luo's are patriarchal that means women get married and start their homes in their husband's compound and uh, the male children are the ones who are left behind to continue the fractal pattern that we were talking about and I hope you've started to see a pattern develop here and we'll be discussing it more as we continue. Presently we take you to a Luo homestead that's been fenced using a live fence. You get an aerial view of a home that has several houses and uh, you get to see granaries that uh, surround Ku. Ku is where the cattle were kept and from what you can see here a young man recently moved out of his uh, parents home and built himself a home with a kitchenette and this pattern continues the more homes are built the more you get to see this self identical pattern so to break down a Luo homestead the first thing you'd see as soon as you got through the gate which is called Rangaj is the main house of the first wife it's also called Od Mikai in the middle there's the cool that's where the cattle were kept and to the right hand side of the main house you'd have Simba for the first born son to the left you'd have Simba for the second born son and the third born son would build to the right as well so as populations increased and people started fighting for resources and going to war, the population of men to women became deeply skewed. And these were low men were required to take in more wives, especially after war events and uh, the population was skewed. Nonetheless, the first wife was accorded utmost respect and her house was the first one you saw as soon as you got through the gate which is also called Rangaj. The first wife was called, was referred to as Mikai and her house was referred to as Od Mikai, Od meaning house and Mikai meaning first wife. So the first wife was actually put on a pedestal so to speak and she had the final say when it came to decisions in the homestead. She also had a say in the choice of the subsequent wives who was to be married or, or who could not get married into the homestead. Her decision was final and she was to be consulted, especially when it came to planting and other major decisions within the homestead. Her home was directly in front of the gate, but also the farthest from the gate. That means that the second wife, if there was one, her home would be to the right of the first wife's home and it would be smaller in size. They could not be the same size. And the third wife would follow suit probably to the right and the house would be smaller than 
the Mikai house. If you zoom out of a Luo homestead, you see a self-similar pattern develop. And in most cases, you'd see the farthest house in that self-similar pattern would be the oldest man in the clan's homestead. And this oldest man would be called Quar, Quaro. So automatically the Quar or the Quaro would become the leader of the group that formed, which was eventually called the clan. He would be the head and would be consulted. Eventually he was called the Kir and at some point when the population grew they would hold elections for the care and these elections were democratic in nature and mostly the most suitable candidate would be elected for that period of time. For example, during war times they would elect the fiercest warrior and uh, during say epidemics they would elect someone who's proficient in medicine, they knew herbs and all the, they had medical knowledge so this democracy is actually what the world has emulated we'll get into that so now we're looking at an extended family homestead in northern uganda and from that you can see the little clusters of the various homes that are built within from the gate, which is the Rangaj, you can tell exactly whose house is whose. Nobody needs an introduction, nobody needs an explanation. The farthest from the gate is usually the core home. And very close to the gates is the oldest son's homes. And before you get to the grandfather's home, you have to pass through the oldest sons and actually you have to get permission from the oldest sons before you can get to the grandfather's compound and from that I hope you can see the fractal arrangement and the patterning that forms if you zoom out even further you're able to see a bigger picture depending on how the clan grew and how the clan developed over time Speaking of time, ancient structures have been unearthed by archaeologists in Kerma and Dukigel that depict ancient Luo houses and they depict the fractal patterns we've talked about. Here's a reconstruction of the excavations they've had at Dukigel. So kindly do more research on this. As a recap, Fractals are self-similar patterns found in nature and Luos built their homes according to these patterns. These patterns allow for growth in plants, allows for growth in animals, organs like lungs, the nervous system, circulatory system. So we see fractals everywhere. What do we learn from this moving forward? Are there things that we might need to put into consideration as a Luo nation in building our modern houses, bearing in mind that our ancestors were very aware of energy movement. They were aware of how water systems moved, even underground, and they took this into consideration while building their homes that now are being studied. If you go to various museums around the world, you find Luo architecture stored in the history canals. Please consider subscribing, liking and sharing this video and we'll see you in our next one. Thank you.